after two weeks worth of delays and one last weather delay this morning, a history making mission finally launched. The launch of Polaris Dawn lit up a dark cloudy sky at Kennedy Space Center at 523 AM. And now four private astronauts are going farther than anyone in the past 50 years. And two of them will complete the first private astronaut spacewalk. We'll have team coverage um, that launch coming up, but first a quick check of your current weather. Candace, we've had rain on and off since this morning. Yeah, I mean, in between about 6 and 7 o'clock, we actually had one pesky tropical downpour that just sat right over Titusville and Merritt Island. And the coastline continues to be kind of the main zone right now where we are seeing some of that rain. Right now, some scattered showers, nothing too, too heavy there in Ormond Beach through Daytona. New Smyrna seeing a little pocket, a little heavy downpour right there, very isolated in nature. And then look at this, the same zone that was developing rain earlier this morning is once again seeing a lot of it. So certainly racking up quite a lot of rain though in the next couple of hours, pretty much all across central Florida. Rain chances right now pretty low at only 30%, really just focused on the coastline throughout the afternoon. Rain chances will be going up to about a 70% by four or five o'clock. Temperatures in the meantime, because of all that rain cooled air, a lot of that cloud cover, as you saw there with our uh, launch early this morning, that cloud cover is really kind of kind of stay in place, keeping temperatures at bay with highs today staying only only in the upper 80s. We'll have more details on the timing of the rain and of course a look at the tropics and tropical storm Francine coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Candace. Well, it took multiple setbacks and a long wait, but the Polaris Dawn astronauts are now headed farther into space than anyone since the Apollo missions with plans to break other records along the way. News 6's James Barvera was there for the launch and breaks down the crew's bold objectives now within reach. So it rained before the launch and it started raining again after the launch. So it really feels like SpaceX found just the right window for Polaris Dawn to finally take off after two weeks of weather delays. Here's what it sounded like during the final countdown at 523. Blasting off in their Crew Dragon capsule on board a SpaceX Falcon 9, Commander Jared Isaacman of the Inspiration4 mission three years ago. The tech billionaire this time flying with Scott Poteet, an Air Force pilot of 20 years, and two SpaceX engineers, Anna Menon and Sarah Gillis, who have helped develop SpaceX's Dragon capsule. The crew is seeking to reach the highest orbit since the Gemini 11 mission in the mid-60s. It would be the furthest anyone has flown from the Earth since the last Apollo mission. The crew will then conduct the first commercial spacewalk in new SpaceX spacesuits. This bold crew also hopes to raise millions more for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, just like Jared and his crew did for Inspiration4. Here was their warm welcome to space from the ground once the crew was flying on their own. We trust your skills, your bravery, and your teamwork to carry out the mission that lies ahead. Godspeed, Flair Stone crew. May you make history and come home safely. We appreciate the kind words. We wouldn't be on this journey without all 14,000 of you back at, uh, at SpaceX and everyone else cheering us on. We appreciate it, and we're going to get to work now. SpaceX says the crew will conduct the spacewalk on Thursday. The entire mission is expected to last five days. In Cape Canaveral, Brevard County, I'm James Sparvero, Getting Results News 6. Thank you, James. And a launch as big as this one doesn't come without Plenty of fans, of course, spectators from all over, even across the pond, were there this morning to see the Falcon 9 lift off. News 6's Ezzy Castro got a few, to, few of them to talk about those exciting moments. A successful rocket launch for the anticipated Polaris Dawn mission crew. We were there to see the spectacular view from Space View Park in Titusville, right at liftoff at 523 this morning. Usually the early bird gets the worm or the, sh the best shot. David Hernley arrived to the park at 1 a.m. since liftoff was initially scheduled for 338 a.m., but was delayed due to weather. But for Hernley, he was ready with his camera and was crossing his fingers for the next launch window. What is it about this that you love so much? Well, it's the first commercial f 
walk in the space and all the medical research they're doing on this mm -hmm. launch, and it's just another historical moment. David and Cassie Bushell flew from the UK a few days ago, and when they heard the announcement from SpaceX, they knew exactly where to go to watch. I mean, when you see something like this... It's just amazing. I mean, you can't describe it. I, I try to describe it to my work colleagues, but you, you've just got to be here to see it. The two say they are hoping to witness another historical moment next time they visit the Space Coast. It never gets old. I get goosebumps every time I see a rocket launch, and uh, it's just a beautiful sight. In Titusville, Ezzy Castro getting results, News 6.